metrics, but actually track accountability, actions, employee engagements, and meetings all in one tool, which gives it a very powerful, uh, gives you a very powerful business intelligence tool to use in the HR and anywhere actually in any organization. We work with clients around the world from Harley Davidson to Lockheed, to 3M and Colgate Palmolive, uh, and they all use this system. So I'm gonna take about 30 minutes this morning and kind of run through, show you some of the key features. And then uh, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Um, so it's a web-based uh, system. All you need is a browser, i.e. Uh, Chrome, uh, Firefox, and you can download and access this system from anywhere that you have internet access. Each user has their own login, and when they log into the system, they're going to go to a screen, which we call your home screen, that we think gives you everything that you need to really drive thermostatic metrics in your organization. Now, over the course of the last 90 days, you've heard a lot about metrics, and I'm uh, sure Zahid has talked to you about metrics are really effective when they're not just flat metrics, just reporting the, the position, but that they actually drive behaviors and change within the organization. And in order to do that, we, we call metrics thermostatic. Uh, so like a thermometer, uh, many, uh, Many metrics just simply tell you the current state of your business. But if you want a thermostat, it's going to tell you the current state of your business. But if it's too hot or too cold, it's going to kick in and drive behaviors to either improve that metric, uh, you know, to, to make metric go up or down. So we're looking for a metric or a system that not only drives and tracks the actual metric, but tracks the behaviors. So in order to do that, when you log into your system, you're gonna see uh, what we call your home dashboard. Now this is completely customizable. You can pick and choose what items you want to show up on, uh, on this dashboard. I have all of them showing up just for room um, because I, if, since this is a demo so that you can actually see what, uh, what's going on. But the three key areas before I actually look at a, at a scorecard are actions, assigning ownership to metrics so that we have direct accountability and then meeting process. Um, so before we actually start looking at metrics, we wanna make sure that we have those things in line. So if I look, I can see all the actions that I have and we'll link actions directly to metrics. Uh, metrics are color coded so I can see how many are past due, how many are coming up in the future, how many have been complete and how many are closed out. You'll actually receive notifications via email if you have that turned on anytime an action of yours is, is coming due one, two or three days ahead of time or if anybody makes a change to an action that you're the owner of. If you click on this, you'll be able to see the actual details of the action. A blue action is a, is an, is a concept that our uh, customers came up with about 10 years ago. And how many times have you gone into a meeting and an action is assigned but you never actually see that that action gets closed. So what we've done is we've added a category of action that the owner of the action, when they think the action is complete, they can mark it as complete. And then it's up to the rest of the team to agree that that action has been complete and then approve the closure. And I'll show you how that works in a meeting. But as you go through this, you can see that act, these are the, all the actions that I have assigned to me from a variety of different teams. I can have as detailed a description as I want. I can apply the action directly to a metric. So that allows us to do some analytics. We can have the original target date on the action, the custom tar, the current target date. I can look and see how many times the action was uh, extended. I can also look at the history of the action and see when the action was created, every time it was modified, and who modified it and for what reason. Now, most actions aren't gonna have this long of a history. This is just a demo action. Uh, I can also add comments to the action so that I can have additional comments or I can actually link uh, files or documents to the action. So if the action is detailed, and you want to have additional information to that action, 
you can paste emails in here. It'll track emails by who, uh, who pasted them in. And I can also add additional files or documents so that the action has uh, all the detail you need to actually complete it. And down the road, if you need to go back and see who completed the action and what they did, all of that detail is there. So these are action slice and dice that way. We also want to link ownership to a metric. So when you're going through building your HR metrics, we want to assign who in the organization has direct responsibility for that metric. So these are all the metrics that I own, and I can look through these metrics and see how they're performing. I can see the actions that are related to these metrics, which are different than mine because other people may have actions associated with them. If I click on this, I'll see the detail of these actions. And, and if I go further, I'll be able to see a graph of how that metric is performing, who owns the action, and the action that each person has taken to ensure that that metric is on track. If I'm doing those things, then when I actually go to my metric view, I can have a very meaningful conversation on what, uh, on what, what are we doing to move the business forward. So this is a, your traditional metric uh, scorecard view. Uh, you can see we have key focus areas that you can choose. These are customizable. You can uh, pick any HR. People's usually going to be a HR, but if there are other areas of the business that you want, or if you want to manage projects, you can also do that in the system. So uh, this system is very much applicable to the HR metrics, but you can expand it to other areas of the business and still have that link where everybody can see uh, the metrics that they are responsible for moving. I'm going to close this to give you a little more room. Uh, the ability in the system is that we can look at data on a monthly, weekly, or daily basis, and we can customize what those periods are. I can look at uh, the current period and the year to date, and I can set targets around those metrics so that I'll be able to see what metrics are not within the scope that I'm looking them, for them to be. I can actually choose how many periods I want to display all the way up to 52. Uh, typically, I like to look at about seven or so periods so that I can see trends. I can see the metric. If there's a smart objective that's listed above the metric, I can see the target for the current period and targets can change. I can see who the owner of the metric is. I can see the frequency of the metric. Um, I can also have sub metrics. So I have a and this is a scrap rate. I don't have an HR uh, demo built out yet, but you can assume it would be the same if this were, uh, you know, hiring on time, hiring or whatever the whatever HR metric that you have. You could break that out by department or by location. But if you see SM here, there's sub metrics. I can expand that, and I will be able to see uh, which of those metrics are um, that build that. If I click on that, we're only going to really focus on the red to make sure that if it's red, uh, the owner of the metric has that corrective action in place. So if I click on the red metric, it'll out give me the detail. I can see that performance of that metric. I can click on any of these items here. If I want to see what happened in July of 2019, it will take me to July of 2019. So I'll be able to see any notes or actions that are in place at that point. When I'm done, I just close it and come back. I can also see any comments that are left in place. And comments are specific by period, whereas the action stays out there until it is actually completed and closed. If I have permission, I can update the metric. If there are submetrics underneath, I can click on it and it'll take me to the details of those submetrics. So I can click on those and add comments or notes if I wanted to do that. Uh, and when I'm done, I can click that. So that submetric could be on another scorecard at another location, or it could be on the same scorecard. The system doesn't matter. Once I link them, I'll, I'll go to those metrics. I'll see their performance. Uh, I can make any comments or read any notes that are there. And then when I'm done, I simply close out and I'm back to where I was. So uh, we give you the ability to do uh, red, green, red, yellow, green, we can do banding above and below. So um, open positions, you don't wanna have uh, too many open positions or not enough open positions. 
So your sweet spot can be in the middle, and if it's above that, it's red, or below that, it's, it's red, or you can have red at a certain spot or above and below green, so you can band. Uh, you can also have uh, exceptional, so blue is exceptional. If I have something that exceeds or is world-class, I can put that in there as my stretch target. Um, we also have the ability to manage by very high-level projects. So a lot of our customers will put high-level projects in place. Uh, they will allow, this will allow them to, to basically say, is this project on track or not on track for the period that we're looking at? In this instance, I can track it by objectives or milestones. I had four milestones to complete this month. I completed four, I'm good. I only completed two this month, I'm red. And your milestone can actually be uh, listed as action. So if I want to see the milestones that are out there, I can build those into the system as well. Uh, we can do just red green or just true false on track or not on track. So a lot of different ways to track metrics in the organization. The notes that are written in are, as I said, they're related to that period. So this note on right first time is for, we'll stick with this period for Jan this metric for January. If I wanna see all the notes in the year to date column, if I click on that, I'll be able to see all the notes shown for the year to date. And if there are any children notes, my year to date just kicked over, there's not too many notes in there. Um, your year-to-date can be customized for whatever period it is that you're looking at, uh, and as your months can be calendar months or months all ending on a Thursday or Friday, a 544 uh, manufacturing calendar. If you only want to look at the metrics that are weekly because your monthly data is not available, then you can simply click and you'll only see your weekly metrics. Uh, so this is kind of your scorecard, uh, your view of how, the, of how the system looks. Once you have the scorecard in place, once you have owners assigned, once you're assigning metrics to each of these, uh, each of these areas, then we also allow you very quickly to create what we call custom dashboards. And think of your dashboards as just a flat white screen that you can drag and drop any information on that you have an interest in. So if I want to take data from multiple different locations, I can drag that on to this dashboard and it will update for either the, the week or the monthly period. So this is an operations dashboard. I can look at my safety, my right first time, my supply, customer satisfaction, uh, overall line efficiency, money spent on equipment repairs. Uh, any of these things I can drag on here and choose to display them as a box with action showing. Uh, with notes showing, uh, any of the graphs again are live. So if I want to see, wow, what happened in June, if I click on that, it'll take me to that month and I can see any notes or details that are, are, are recorded. So your dashboards are, I kind of liken it to a live PowerPoint. And we have a lot of customers that actually do all of their reporting using these systems because they don't have to update this. Once they build this background, if they want to change the data and look at it for November, then all the data will change and now it'll be for November. So it makes it very easy to update your, your metrics and update your reporting because the data is already being pulled from whichever source, whatever scorecard it came from, uh, and updated into the, into the system. Now you can create as many different views as you want. Um, there's all different graphs. You can look at things at very high level. You can look at things on just a, a low level. You can create books of, of information um, that if you want, uh, how, you're looking at your, how you're looking at your data. You can also link uh, charts and drive all the way through uh, as far as you want. So if I wanna look at uh, the East Coast in the US and then I wanna look at a specific plant, I can break that plant down by key areas. Uh, and again, uh, this gives me a quick view of this is how we're doing in each one of these key focus areas. I have trend indicators. So this is showing that I'm green, I'm trending up because I was red last period. Um, this one here is showing I'm red, I'm trending down because I was yellow last period. If I want, I can also choose to display uh, graphs and actions on this. So not only can I see 
performance, but I can see the actions, same kind of view that are related to the metrics that I'm looking at. Or I can just see them at a top level. If I want to break it down further and actually report, instead of just colors, I want to report the actual metric. I can show the current, the current goal for the period. I can show the current results for the period or the year-to-date results, all depending on what I choose to show within the box. Uh, if I want to see this is red, uh, I should be able to click on that and see what's going on with that metric and the actions that are in place to drive that, to drive that change. So everything that you need to drive your HR metrics is in one place with the not only reporting the metrics, but looking at the root cause and corrective actions that you're taking in order to move those metrics along and improve the overall HR metric performance. Um, and again, you can customize these views any way that you want. If you like a view, you can bookmark it and it will show up on your, on your, front, uh, on your front page. Um, so you know, I have a lot of different, different views and, uh, that I've, I've chosen to look at. Um, so you customize what's appropriate for you. So if someone builds a good dashboard and you like it, then you can follow it and be able to drive that. A couple other quick points I'd like to cover are meetings. I talked about our, our meetings. So we have a meeting functionality built into the system. If you believe that you need to have metrics, uh, HR metrics, which I think we all agree are important, and we are assigning ownership and actions for non-performing metrics, there needs to be a spot where we actually review those non-performing metrics. And that would be in our in a weekly or monthly meeting where the team gets together and actually looks through the metrics and it follows a kind of set agenda that we pick up. The first thing that we do, we track attendance, who's required to be at the meeting and who's not. So you can invite people to that meeting and track who was there. You have a history of the meeting. Then we would review the actions. Uh, and this is a view where somebody would come into the team and Michael would say, uh, this action is done. The team would say, I approve it, click. Uh, Seth would say, this action is done. The team would approve it. Uh, and it would be, it would be, uh, it would turn from red to, to green. Uh, if an action, somebody said, wow, I don't agree that that action should be done, then it would be rejected or additional action would be, would take place. Um, so the team would review the actions from the previous meeting. You can easily see again how many times an action was extended if it was, and you can look at the history and why that action was extended as well. So you have a lot of detail there. Then we would look at the scorecard, and this would be where we bring up your scorecard, what we were just looking at, and usually focus just on the red items. What are the non-performing HR metrics that we need to make sure we have corrective actions in place? Uh, then, you know, go around the table, we've got recognition built into the system. Uh, it allows us to recognize uh, people. So we've recognized Rita for what she's done on the, the training. She's done a great job. And if we have all of these things, and as an HR person, if you're doing performance reviews or you wanna do one-on-one -on -one meetings with your team, now you have the ability to run engagement reports that will allow you to actually put the data behind your review or your engagement. So if I wanna run a report for a specific person, uh, I can create an engagement report for, uh, uh, Seth, let's say. So if I pick that report, it's going to give me all the information on Seth for six months. It shows me all the actions that he's completed, how many of the actions were completed late, how many were completed early or on time. Okay, I can look at the metrics that Seth has in place. Uh, if I want to click on these, I'll see details of those metrics so I can see trend forecast. So here we are. Here's the direction is good. Uh, green is up. Um, but he's down for this period. So I can click and see, well, it was good for December. So I can see all of a sudden he had a big fall off. There should be notes or actions in, in there explaining what's going on. Then I can look at all the actions that he has over that period or all the metrics, sorry, that he has. So this would be all of his HR metrics that he's responsible for and which ones are good or not good. 
I would be able to click on those and see if there were notes or actions in place, seeing if he's following the system. Uh, and then at the end, I can look and see how many times uh, Seth was recognized by his peers and for what reason. <coughs> Excuse me. That gives you the ability to have a very meaningful dialogue around uh, what that person is doing, how they're impacting the metrics that you've assigned to them, uh, how you know their impact on the business with live data. So you know, a, an additional ability to kind of look through that process. That kind of gives you a high level view of what uh, Visuant can do. Uh, specifically, there are a lot of other features that are in here, but just keeping it, we have documents that are built in. We have, uh, you can upload documents and track documents, uh, versions. You can also upload documents to meetings so that if you're in a meeting, you can have certain documents uh, loaded in, and locked into that meeting so that as people log into the meeting, if it's remote, all the documents are created and you can click on them in this position. You can have multiple meetings. Another really nice feature is you have the ability to pass information to other teams, other meetings within your organization. So if you're a large organization and you have multiple sites around, uh, even multiple meetings within one building or multiple meetings across multiple locations, you have this pass up, pass down feature, which allows you to actually pass information to uh, any team within the organization that you have permission to see. So uh, if I do a pass down, it's going to actually pass down. If I pass down within the Atlanta plant, it'll pass down to everybody in my uh, tree branch. If I pass up, it'll go up to one level so that the next level up. Uh, so if I pass up from product line airplanes, it'll go up to the manufacturing team and they'll have a chance to actually review it. If I do a pass to, it gives me the ability to pass to any specific, uh, any specific team, um, regardless of where, of where they may be. So if I wanna just pass to um, all my safety teams, all of my HR teams, uh, I can do that and it'll bring up each of those teams, each of their meetings. So if I had a specific HR meeting, I could just check that HR meeting and then submit that information. Then when that team goes to meet, they'll see that information in their pass up or pass down, uh, either what they sent or what they've received. So a link of information throughout the organization. So if HR has an announcement they wanna to make to the entire organization, they can use this method to distribute it. And you'll know it's not like an email or mailing something that when the team meets, they will have seen it, they will discuss it. It's not relying on someone else to pick up that information. So Zahid, I'm gonna pause there. Are there any other questions or features you would like me to show that may be of interest to the group? Excellent, thank you so much, John. I leave it to the house to ask any question uh, that can give uh, more information. So please do raise your hand before you want to ask or you have any, anything to say. Um, Mars Canada, uh, uh, m, m Mars Canada, uh, they all uh, use the system as of today, depending on the platform. But for the most part, if it exports data to a CSV file, we can import it here. If you want a direct link, then it's going to require a little bit of, uh, a little bit of programming. But other than the programming, everything that I've shown you, you can do yourself. It's a very simple system. What I can do uh, as well is send you a um, uh, kind of an overview document um, that's just a summary. I saw somebody was looking for a, a summary uh, that uh, kind of gives you um, uh, some details, some screenshots of this presentation and a little bit more about, uh, about the actual process. Um, okay, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think we are done with most of the questions. So what we'll do is that we will share uh, 
Sure, John, go ahead. Yeah, so, I'm, this, these are just, I'll send this document to you. It's a, it's a PDF so that you can actually kind of look through it and give, give your people something to walk away from that they can look. It's a lot of what I actually share, uh, shared with you, goes into some of the, the background. So not to keep you guys anymore, I will, I will send that over to you guys right now and you can share that with uh,